So maybe you're a seasoned photographer who just can't seem to land any realtors as clients in real estate photography, or you are a brand new photographer looking for a competitive edge in a marketplace that is dominated by veterans in the industry. Well, in today's video, guys, I'm gonna be going over the one piece of equipment that I have used that turned this into me only having one or two houses a week to making this my full-time job. Let's dive into the video. What's going on shareholders and viewers? Welcome back to the channel again. My name is Nick and in today's video, we're gonna be going over this one piece of equipment that is arguably the best piece of equipment I could have ever bought for my business. Now, if you didn't see my last video, I'm gonna link it at the end of this video, but it goes over why we do not cold call in my business and I do not champion cold calling in your business either. We go into brokerages. And I did have a comment in my last YouTube video asking me to go over how I market to realtors, which I'm thankful for the comment. And I am gonna make a video about that, but I needed to bring up the one piece of equipment that I used in my sales pitch that helps me dominate and get new clients. And I'm gonna be going over that piece of equipment today and then in a later video, I'm gonna be going over how I market. So if you have any questions for that video, please let me know down in the comment section down below. First, I'm gonna be going over the methods that I used previously leading up to this and where you may be at in this process. And if any of these methods is effective for you that didn't work for me, let me know down in the comment section down below and the other viewers watching. Maybe it worked for you, but for me personally, I found holes in all of these issues until I got to this portion of my sales pitch that I have really been able to master and be able to go in and out of brokerages pretty confidently knowing that I can showcase my work effectively. The first thing that I tried to use was my laptop. This is a 2012 Mac, I think it's a MacBook Air, and the display looks like it's from 2012. The photos look absolutely horrible on this. And I would try and showcase my work while going through my pitch. And I would like be pushing the arrows and then if they wanted to look at the work, that meant they had to hold the laptop. And they're trying to find a way, like they don't wanna drop your, <laughs> your MacBook, right? And they're trying to look through the pictures and they're trying to listen to you at the same time. And this level of multitasking was just not effective. It did not work out very well. And I think I maybe got one or two clients when I first started my business like a little over two years ago. And I wanna remind you guys, I tried all these methods over about two years. And it wasn't until recently that I found one that was very effective. And this second one, I wanna just bring it in a little bit because this one's gonna hurt. And I just want you to brace yourself for it. But the second one that I tried that you've probably tried as well or are gonna try, which I recommend you don't do, is if you're directing them to your website or your Instagram, I wanna rip the bandaid off right now. They're not going to your website or your Instagram. That one is probably the most painful to hear because you've built this portfolio, you've worked really hard on it, and I'm actually gonna go into the very last step why this one's actually the worst method for you to use. I'm gonna stay tuned to the end, I'm gonna tell you why that is. Uh, but they're not gonna go to your Instagram unless A, they're right in front of you and you make them do it, or they're, you guys are looking at each other's profiles together, or B, they absolutely need you in that moment. Realtors' lives can be very hectic and they're not gonna go look at your work unless they need it or in their need of a photographer right then. I did have some realtors that looked at my website and looked at my Instagram, but there's no way of being able to verify whether or not they've seen your work. So even if you create this pitch, at the very end, if you don't showcase your work to them, you're putting it in their hands and basically your personality to see whether or not they're gonna hire you. Don't do that. You put in all this work for your sales pitch. Don't just hope that they go to your website or your Instagram. Be prepared to show them something. And that was something that I learned the hard way and I could have had more clients in the beginning had I learned that lesson early on. Third and lastly, the method that I try to use to showcase my work was using just the iPhone itself. The iPhone actually isn't that bad showcasing your work because you can easily scroll through and show them your work and show them the stuff that you've done and they can also hold it which makes it easy for them to be able to look at your work and scroll through and see whether or not it's good. But there's one thing that you haven't considered that I didn't really realize until I tried this method for a couple of months. And that harsh reality is that a majority of people have really, really bad eyesight. Even somebody as myself who has terrible eyesight didn't even think to consider that they're gonna be looking at your phone and if they don't have their glasses or contacts in, they can barely see your work and nobody is going to admit to you that they can't see what you're showing them. Even when somebody asks me to read something and I don't have my glasses, I try to just finesse as best I can and act like I don't need them, but the reality is I can't see half of what you're showing me. I actually didn't even realize this until I was at a brokerage going through my sales pitch and then I handed them my iPhone and then they reached for their head looking for their glasses, realized they didn't have their glasses and then was like looking around their desk and they found their glasses. But it wasn't until I put two and two together that I realized like, 
that's the first person that was even like somewhat honest and was basically like, I can't see what you're showing me. And I realized I was like, oh my gosh, this whole time, I don't know how many people I've probably pitched to that I've shown them my work on the phone and realized what are the odds that they can even see the photos that I'm showing them. Even if you have the brightness turned up, if you don't have 20-20 vision, you're gonna struggle to see the quality of the photos versus somebody else's quality. And if you guys haven't already yet, before we get into the last topic, if you could please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it. Talking about these topics is kind of taboo and people don't really like to talk about marketing because of course, it's what makes your business. So I wanna be able to provide more of this kind of content for you and for me to be able to do that and know that you guys are interested in what I'm doing, liking, subscribing goes a long way. So if you haven't yet, I ask that you please do that and let's get into the last topic here. Now, moving into the last piece of equipment, arguably the best piece of equipment I've ever bought for my company is the Apple iPad. The iPad checks off so many boxes that you guys would not believe and we're gonna go through all of them right now. Right off the bat, just with the eyeball test, look, if you're gonna look at these two different pictures, which one already looks better just from the camera right now? You've got the small version of the photo or you have this nice, well expanded, overexposed because of the brightness, but really beautiful picture, which is the same exact picture that's on the phone, but this is so much larger and it's so much brighter. One of the things that I like to do, and I'll show you a couple of the photos here. I would show you my whole thing, but we need to get our subscribers up. Um, but what I like to do is I'll scroll through my photos here and you can see not only am I showcasing my photography, but I'm also have highlighted text bubbles so that you can see all of the work that I've done on these photos so you can have a better appreciation for what I do. You as a photographer already know what you do on your end of the work but realtors don't know what you do. Most of the time they think that we just take the photos and those are the photos that look the way they do because we use a nice camera, we don't use our phones. But in reality, we have to do so much more work on the back end. On top of that, I also bought this $20 knockoff version of the Apple Pen, works very well, highly recommend. But when I hand my iPad to a realtor to be able to look at my portfolio, I give them the pen, the iPad's easy to hold, it's lightweight, even if some of these, you know, not very strong. They can sit there and they can scroll through, they get a nice little pen, it feels soft, it looks nice, and they can scroll through and look at the different photos out of your portfolio and see in a very bright display the difference in your photography as opposed to somebody else's. Second, we're gonna move past the fact that you should not just recommend and hope people check out your website and your Instagram. This obviously beats that as well because they're seeing your work firsthand and they're seeing how nice it actually looks. Whenever they're looking or you give them your Instagram or your website, you don't know what they're looking at your website or your Instagram through. For all you know, they have an outdated phone from back from like 2015, or the brightness may be bad, it may not be Apple, or it may not be a nice Android. They could be looking at your photos through a 2004 uh, windows, which I have seen in people's offices. Do not let the quality of your work be determined by a windows from 2004, okay? <laughs> On top of that, I actually did help one realtor who is not very tech savvy, adjust the brightness on her computer because her brightness, if this was the highest and this was the lowest, it was right here. So all the work that came across her computer didn't look good. So to wrap it all up, again, the iPad is by far, hands down, the best marketing equipment that I could have ever purchased for my company. It has helped me grow when all the other methods have failed. I hope that it helps you grow as well and all this information is helpful for you and your business. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comment section down below. And if you also have any questions about my marketing pitch, let me know down there as well. Whenever I make that video, I wanna be able to answer all the questions that I can. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, become a shareholder, it's absolutely free. And I will see you shareholders in the next video.